some ladies were assuming that everyone in the room voted like they did mm. and it quickly became apparent that we had we had that and democrats yes. in the same room yes in the same room and so what we talked about is the importance of moving toward the other person yeah. in love you could be correct in what you're saying but discredit yourself in the way you're saying it i mean even you and i there are things that we disagree about right. that doesn't mean we can't have a good relationship even if you disagree with this podcast episode <laughs> love us. to hear about it we love to talk about it we'll move toward you <laughs> in truth and clarity and gentleness and love Bye. Welcome to the We Can Talk About This podcast, conversations with Jonathan and Krista Threlfall about ideas shaping us and the world we live in. Today, we are diving into the topic of how to talk with people you disagree with. Yeah, so we have talked with people we disagree with, and we've disagreed with each other at times. Sometimes right? we have, yeah. Yeah, and this is this is a topic that we thought would be really helpful for many reasons. It's, it's really helpful at any season of life, but... This year, you know, being elections, mm -hmm. that's on a lot of people's minds. People are disagreeing with each other. And how do you even communicate with people you disagree with? Why should you even pursue those conversations? Yeah, I think that especially, it seems like in the past three or four years, especially since COVID, it seems like things have intensified mm -hmm. with the amount of disagreements that people have and how hard people find it to have decent conversations with each other. So, yeah, this is something we really want to talk about because we all need to have these kinds of conversations and we might as well do them well. And so, yeah, let's we'll jump into it. So, first of all, yeah, before we jump into yeah, it, I would ahead. like to say this is something that you have helped me with. Oh, since we've been, that. we've had this conversation. I know it's always good to hear again. Uh, I, I used to approach disagreements, even disagreements between you and I about um anything mm -hmm. and i would be very combative and i remember sometimes we'd be talking and you you would say <laughs> we're just having a good conversation like there's the, you know we you don't have to get all fighty yeah yeah well i think part of it is that i love a good discussion and i do love an argument and i think i'm not sure if this is a guy girl thing or just a, a me thing or whatever my mindset but i enjoy the challenge of working through an idea and sorting through the reasons in support of that idea or against that idea. But in the context of a marriage, it could probably feel like a threat to the relationship rather than... Depending on what you're talking about. Right. I think you should also clarify what you just said when you said you do enjoy an argument. Because... Well, to clarify. <laughs> <laughs> because i uh that that sounds like someone who just, enjoys just loves a fight exactly loves a fight yeah. yeah well i guess probably thank you i should probably say i enjoy um i enjoy dialogue i enjoy you, intellectual exchange yes. exchange of ideas mm -hmm. all right if someone thinks something that's ra vastly different than the way i think i want to know why like yes. what's what makes them tick what reasons do they have to support that that's i'm very curious about that so which, which we'll talk about this later too but that's one of the things that makes you so good at at this thank you is that is that you are curious about that um but man my head is getting really swelling up big time right now but let's move on yeah i think that you are not by saying you enjoy a good argument mm -hmm. or you enjoy arguing you're not someone who's looking to fight all the time and no. there are and there are people yeah, like that yeah, that's why yeah. i thought that would be helpful to clarify thank you i really don't like you're right i don't look for a fight mm -hmm. and i don't like hearing people that it sounds like they're enjoying disagreeing with each other more yeah. than they're trying to understand each other oh my. so yeah and that's something i guess that's kind of what i meant when i said earlier we seem to be entering a, a phase whether it's politics uh, or and even in religion that we we can't seem to have a decent conversation with each other because we feel so strongly and so passionately about a certain position and we tend to demonize the opponents okay we're getting too far ahead of us let's yeah. jump right into it so should we, have we already talked about why we need to have these conversations? no we, okay, have. we need to get there so from your perspective krista and i think this would also answer the question as to why we decided to do this episode at all why even talk to people who disagree with you why would that be important well i think one of the reasons is because they might be right mm. so there are there, inconceivable right yeah there are ways that i think mm -hmm. 
Um, and some of them I'm wrong about and I need other people's help. Mm. And as a Christian, I need God's help and the word and the spirit to point those areas out. But God uses people. Yeah. And there have been people who I have really disagreed with in the past. And then five, 10 years later, I look back at that and I'm like, wow, they were right. Mm. I was wrong. Mm. And so even interacting with them, even if I don't agree with them in the moment, I have, I need to have and continue to pursue those conversations to learn from others, to learn areas where I might be wrong and they might be right. Yeah. Wow. That's really good. That's very good. That that takes a degree of humility. That we're we're going to talk about that a little later. I think it approaches and mindsets of talking with people you don't agree with. Um, anything else on why it's important to talk with people you don't agree with? Um, what do you think? I I, I think that it's good practice because it, it's important because as human beings we won't agree with each other and everything, and our tendency is to either withdraw from each other or to fight with one another. And I'm talking about even about violent, getting violent about things. So in order to sustain society, like humane, civilized society, we have to be able to get ideas out and discuss them without saying, I'm not going to talk about this with you. I'm going to retreat, isolate, or I'm going to shut you up. Th- those are the Those are the kind of reactions that we tend to have. And so we need on a very basic societal level to move toward one another as human beings to try to understand each other try to communicate our viewpoint understand the other person's viewpoint and and have a dialogue yeah and that doesn't mean agreeing with everybody it doesn't mean that we are may never reach a resolution but it means we have to have ways other than violence or or isolation Mm -hmm. to deal with our differences yeah yeah, I think the opposite side of the coin of what I mentioned, too, is other people might be wrong and, right. and might need to learn from me. Right. Um, which, unfortunately, it seems like a, most people take, I take that. <laughs> like, I, I can always assume, well, I'm the right one mm-hmm. and you're wrong. Um, but it is, those are, those are some reasons we need to have yeah. conversations with people who disagree with us and why we need to... Just engage with other people. Yeah. No matter what what they think. Yeah. We're never going to agree with another person on absolutely everything. Right. I mean, even you and I, there are things that we disagree about. Right. That doesn't mean we can't have a good relationship and that we shouldn't yeah. have a good relationship. Right. But yeah. still pursue that relationship with those disagreements. So Yeah. It's we have to understand that it's possible to have love and disagreement at the same time. Mm-hmm. It's sometimes hard for us to reconcile that. But I think that goes back to that verse in Ephesians 4 that says, speaking the truth in love, mm-hmm. uh, that love love encompasses the ability to speak the truth to somebody. There, there's something else I, I thought of when you said, uh, first of all, I want to talk to people who disagree with me because I might be wrong and because they might be wrong. And you're, that means that in that case, you'd be right. But I also think that talking to someone who disagrees with you may help clarify why you believe what you believe. Yes. And you, you've you finally talked to, one, to someone who is absolutely opposed to your point of view. Talking to them, you haven't changed your point of view, but you've refined it. Mm-hmm. Or you've understood more reasons why you believe that. Or you understood an objection to that and found that that objection still doesn't stand. Mm-hmm. And I think that's actually really important. As speaking as Christians and from a Christian worldview, this is how, this is how the early Christians began to develop theology yeah. in response to the pagan philosophers of their time. They had to draw deeply with uh, into the resources of scripture, uh, organize what it taught, and then and then answer some of the objections that people had given to them uh, in those early days. And so we, I think we understand ourselves and our own beliefs more deeply, not as we isolate ourselves or shut the other person up, but by as we, ex- as we expose what we believe to what other people believe and see how those intersect with one another. And that helps clarify and refine what we believe. I think that's really, really important. Yes, it is. And I definitely found that in my life, my personal spiritual growth, times of really good spiritual growth have happened when I have had a relationship with someone who believes differently than I do. Mm -hmm. And I, they talk about what they believe 
and I talk about what I believe from the Bible and why. And and then after after those conversations, it's always times of soul searching, like, okay, is is this right? Like, what does the Bible say about this? And mm -hmm. it, it has served to drive me right. back to the word, closer to God. And and those are specifically spiritual disagreements. Right. Um, but that has served to really advance my deepen my faith. Right make my relationship with God closer. Yeah. So those are some reasons why we think you should pursue relationships and conversations with people you disagree with. But how? Yeah. How, how do you go about it? I think the how and probably the question that we want to answer is the mindset that you want to have when you go into a discussion like that or a conversation or approaching someone who doesn't agree with you. So you've already mentioned the first one that we wanted to discuss and that is a posture of humility this idea that i can learn from this person i can learn from anyone and that that's something that we easily forget we think well if that person's wrong what can i learn from them well you might learn something about how to speak well you might learn how uh how someone reasons i mean it could be that their logic is impeccable but their conclusion is wrong so you can learn something about good logic but, mm -hmm. but uh, how to avoid wrong conclusions. Um, you can learn ways that you might come across that are really offensive Yeah. too. Um, maybe, maybe your bottom line is right, mm. but the whole way you go about it is wrong. Mm -hmm. So, and, and really approach it as we talked about this, it's not, maybe I can learn from you, something from you. It's, I, I can learn something from you and I need to learn right. something from you. You looking at other people with the posture of you have something to teach me. Yeah. You have there there are ways that you are better at thinking mm. or life or other things yeah. than I am rather than I have the highest position of authority and knowledge and decorum and I'm here to teach right. everyone else. Yeah, and it allows you to go away from a conversation in which you disagree with someone having benefited personally from it mm -hmm. not because you prove them wrong but because they actually taught you something mm -hmm. and that's that's incredibly important uh to do so yeah approaching a, a difference of opinion um, a conversation with someone who disagrees with you by assuming that you have something to learn from that person no matter who they are no matter what they believe you can learn something from them and as we were talking about this earlier james 3 came to my mind yes. and i absolutely love this passage I, I read it a few years ago um as i was thinking through some disagreements uh, that were happening with me and other people and then with other people around me and it was just the perfect word for that moment and ever since then it's just stuck in my mind james three thirteen says who is wise and understanding among you by his good conduct let him show his works how by arguing everyone on everyone down no in the meekness of wisdom mm. but if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts do not boast and be false to the truth this is not the wisdom that comes down from above but is earthly unspiritual demonic for where jealousy and selfish ambition exist there will be disorder and every vile practice and then this description of the wisdom from above the wisdom from heaven the wisdom that is jesus wisdom the wisdom from above is first pure mm. And I, I love that pure yes. because that's the, the first thing when, when we're talking with others about spiritual things, about, about doctrinal issues, that has to be right. That's not something you're going to just fudge on. Right. Yes. So it's first pure, but then the very next thing James says is that it's peaceable, yes. gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits impartial and sincere and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace yeah. i just think those those character traits are so important and that's something that you can only get from a relationship with god and the right. spirit living and just working those fruits of the spirit Absolutely. out in your life otherwise i think you may become so focused on being peaceable that you forget the purity exactly you, you you're so focused on reconciliation and agreement that you forget there's something called objective truth here. Mm -hmm. It's not It's not just, oh, this is my perspective versus your perspective. And I don't know about you, but for me, this is my truth. Yes. We're talking about truth that is objective outside everyone's opinion. 
for us to discover. And if you if you reverse the order, I think it's the order is critical. Yes. It's first pure and then peaceable, not peaceable, then pure. But having established the truth and the purity, it must be peaceable in the way that we can make it gentle. Yes. Do, you know, and I, they, these verses are so clarifying too, not just for your own heart, but as you observe disagreements and arguments around you, even with people who would say they're spiritual leaders. Mm. Okay, how are they approaching this? Is it is it with purity? Are they treating treating the word of God mm. as the ultimate truth? Are they being peaceable and gentle? Or is it more characterized by selfish ambition and jealousy? Yeah. Yeah. So much of our fighting and you know the next verses immediately after that talks about what causes quarrels and fights yeah they, they come from your lusts yeah so that whole passage highly recommend james yeah. james three and four you know i was reflecting on that too just thinking about different conversations i've heard and discussions i see on facebook in which the discussion is not done in a peaceful way yes and it inclines me to think even though they're right to think that they're wrong Mm. You see how a person mm. could completely sabotage their position and their argument by doing it in a way that's combative and hostile and mean spirited. It's like, well, you can be all right. You could be correct in what you're saying, but discredit yourself in the way you're saying it and, and thereby lose an opportunity to persuade, to persuade someone of the truth because of the harsh way that you presented it. Mm -hmm. And I think G Jesus is a perfect model of this, yeah. right? Because Jesus is unflinchingly for the truth and he speaks the truth in fact his enemies recognize mm -hmm. that about them they say you you are not a respecter of persons you're going to speak the truth no matter what and yet he did so in a way that was appropriate to the occasion appropriate to the person he was speaking to and yet jesus models that first pure then peaceable and gentle and those other qualities mm -hmm. that you've read there excellent very good yeah so there's the posture of humility and then a second mindset that i think we should talk about too is we probably already covered a little bit but it's it's your belief about the other person mm. um th this is something that i found so helpful for me is that when i'm talking to a person i'm talking to someone who is nervous afraid has ambitions has insecurities it's so easy when you're in a discussion to focus on your own insecurities and your own fears and in focusing on that you can forget that you're speaking to a person who's who's just as nervous about the way they're coming across as the way you may be coming across. And just realizing that you're talking to someone who's very much like you, in fact, probably more like you than they are unlike you. Um, that's for me, a very important thing to realize. It just humanizes the yeah. discussion. Yeah, I think it can be easy to look at that person as the argument. You know, yes. I have, I have point, I have view A, Yeah. you have view B you are view b yeah and i am view a and yeah. and it's, it becomes very one-dimensional mm -hmm. instead yeah. of this is a person yeah and yeah. I, I, sometimes people when they're arguing their insecurities and fears don't come out because they're so dogmatic mm -hmm. about certain things yeah. so you all you see is they have a different viewpoint than i do yeah, yeah. so that's that is really important yeah you know there's also a way, and I thought about this just now, and having you talking to someone, you may think that they hold that position really strongly. And in fact, they may not hold it very strongly at all. Mm. But by disagreeing with them very aggressively, you could actually produce a stronger reaction than is necessary in them and create a, a bigger argument that is necessary. Yeah. And you could actually cement them in a position they really didn't want to take in any way. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why it's so important to be gentle in your response mm -hmm. to ask, do you do you actually believe that like do you mm. do you tell me tell me why because if you just come down with a hammer upon that belief then they're gonna they're gonna recoil and, and dig in it's like okay now now you've done the opposite of what you hope to do yeah you've actually forced them because of their pride obviously they're gonna want to defend themselves to defend a statement that looking back they may really not find defensible mm. and so i think that's another reason why like view them as a person and realize that they are in progress and in, in, in their in shaping and forming their beliefs as well and that discussion could actually contribute toward bringing them a good direction as yeah. well as of course yourself helping yeah. yourself learn too it's always easy to see someone who thinks a way believes a way votes a way that is opposite yeah. of what you do and just to categorize them as that right and 
you know, a, a, maybe it was last year, a year and a half ago, in the ladies' Bible study that I teach at our church, there was a discussion question that went along with the passage we were studying. I can't remember what passage. It could have been James 3. But um, it, it was talking about, suppose there's a woman who's a Republican and a woman who's a Democrat in your church, and they're having a hard time getting along. Mm. How could you encourage them in this? And that discussion question itself was was incredible and sort of hilarious to watch play out because it, at first some ladies were assuming that everyone in the room voted like they did mm. and it quickly became apparent that we had we had that and democrats yes. in the same room yes in the same room and so what we talked about is the importance of moving toward the other person yeah. in love mm -hmm. and so instead of just cutting them off in, instead of that, asking asking questions, yeah. approaching them with humility. Yeah. And yes. you mentioned this at the beginning with curiosity. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, this issue, for example, I'm sh I am struggling to understand how you how you could vote this way. Do you, do you mind just helping me understand yeah. that? Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> moving towards someone in love is really important. Yeah, I think that also I was going to say this a little later on, but I think I'll just I'll bring it at now that this principle of, of communication that I think I came across somewhere in it might have been the seven habits of highly effective people that says something like seek first to understand then to be understood. So make sure you're you know what this person is saying before you try to say what you think they should they should understand. And, and to me, that is incredibly important. And I, I th this is, doesn't have to do just with discussions with people who disagree with you, but also just in marriage, in mm -hmm. any relationship. Why are you smiling? No, because, <laughs> because I, I don't think I do that very well. I think I, I can sometimes just assume that other people are disagreeing with me. Uh -huh. Or sometimes we, you and I will be having a conversation and I will, you'll, I will start getting all like defensive and you'll say, I think we agree on this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's, that's tricky. I think my tendency for good or for ill is to try to emphasize points of agreement mm -hmm. so much so that to a fault, I could overlook the points of disagreement, genuine mm -hmm. disagreement. But I still think that principle is a very wise one. And I think it, it's, it goes right along with, this is, uh, with, uh, Proverbs. I had the verse right up here. Um, and, and I lost it. Oh, here it is. Uh, if one gives an answer before he hears, it is his folly and shame. That's Proverbs 18, 13. Don't try to present an argument based on something you don't fully understand. Yeah. Try to under try to get, where's this person coming from? What really are they saying? And then, then try to get them to understand where you're coming from, but mm -hmm. seek first to understand, then to be understood. Incredibly yeah. important principle yeah. of communication. Yeah, it is. You know, at the beginning, you said that you like to argue and we clarified yes. what you meant by that yeah but there are some people who love to argue right it seems like their their hobby is fighting with other people yeah and so i think we should touch on that as well like, yeah so i i think so we talked about the posture of humility what you believe about the other person and that takes us to being alert to the other person's purpose mm. so if they're having a discussion, are they having it just because they want to disagree with someone? I've mm -hmm. I've had conversations with people where I realize they want to be validated by by being disagreed with. And if mm -hmm. I begin to point out, oh, actually, I think we're on the same page here, that made them mad because they didn't want to be on the same page. They actually wanted to argue. And so with someone like that, you could be sure that conversation is not going to lead in a productive way because what they are enjoying is the clash. Like that's that's not the point of communication though. Mm -hmm. The point of communication is mutual understanding that happens sometimes through clash, but if it's that if it's the collision that they are delighting in, then it's not worth carrying on that discussion. Mm -hmm. And I think at points like that it's important to just just end it. Just say, you know, love the person, but say this probably isn't going anywhere there's probably isn't a beneficial discussion mm -mm. and it's 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 better to do that this is another uh proverb that says this is 26 4 do not answer a fool according to his folly 
or you yourself will be just like him. Mm. And actually, this can happen, right? Mm -hmm. Someone says something and it's obvious that they're just reveling in the clash of words. And then someone else gets into that. And you're like, no, no, please don't do that because you're you're kind of you're putting yourself down on their level. Yeah. And then you become just like them. That person just because and you, then it's two fools arguing with one another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, you can see this happening a lot on social media, right? too. And even with that, like, Social media, people are very rarely won over to a different set of beliefs because of an argument they had on social media. Could I could I make that a, a very distinct point here? Yeah. And and how to because you Please. you transition to the the medium of communication. That's another incredibly important point. So keep keep going there. I just want to make sure that our listeners know. That's all I had to say right now. Go ahead. I'm sorry for interrupting, okay. but yeah, it can be that the the medium itself, whether it's Facebook or, or Twitter or our blog, can uh, not help the communication. So some people are yeah. beyond; they're behind a screen, and they somehow it impersonal it impersonalizes the interaction. Oh, right? and and let's take it a step further. It's not only that it cannot help; like it's hurtful. Right. Yeah, I mean that. You know, when whenever I see things like that, it's just. It was those exact things that brought me to James 3 and found such clarity yeah. in this because I rarely ever see a social media fight break out where there is purity, peaceableness, gentleness, yeah. an openness to reason. I, I rarely see that. Yeah, yeah. So it's interesting. You can do this experiment probably if you have social media to see how the interaction, the, the quality of interaction scales according to how impersonal it is. So you have an argument in a, like a thread on a Facebook post or something. Now that's highly impersonal. Now try taking that to the next level, make it more personal by sending that person a personal message by saying, hey, I know she said this or that. Okay, immediately things begin to change a little bit. It may still be nasty. Okay, now ask if you could say, hey, can we set up a time to talk on the phone and have a conversation about this just to make sure I understand where you're coming from. Okay, then there's a lot more personal element. Okay, have them over to your home, right? Come on in, you know, get out of the cold. Here's, you know, sit by the fire, have a cup of coffee. All right, then you're dealing with them as a person. Mm -hmm. And and they're not about to say the kinds of things they, they were willing to say for the world to see um in response to that idea from the safety of behind their yeah, phone or yeah, laptop yeah and now they're they're in person mm -hmm. and so yeah that's why the, the sometimes the medium the communication itself can hinder the effectiveness of the discussion yeah but i will say that doesn't sometimes you see things on on social media that maybe god wants you to take action mm -hmm. on and even this happened last year for me where I saw something from someone that I'm friends with who I barely know. <laughs> and I wasn't about to comment and say, I disagree with this, but I kept praying about it mm. and God kept bringing it to my mind. And so I ended up reaching out to them yeah. and, yeah. and just saying, Hey, this, this was really concerning to me. Mm. And this is why it was concerning. And I'm sure you didn't intend that, but do you mind explaining what you meant by that? Yeah, that's good. And and it it ended that we disagreed mm -hmm. and disagreed very very strongly with each other, but the interactions that we had were peaceable. Yeah, I would say both sides yeah. were peaceable. cordial, polite. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I I appreciate the fact that you prayed about that, that you talked to God about it before you talked to the other person about it. I think that's another th important thing to keep in mind that every conversation we have. God is there. Yeah. God is listening. Yeah. And it ought to be for Christians, it ought to be not just a two-way conversation, but a three-way conversation. Yes. We're realizing, God, I need wisdom for this. God, is this the right time or place? Should I even be spending my time having this conversation? You can always hunt down something that some false idea that could be corrected, but mm -hmm. is that really worth your time? Yeah. Or you are the giver of time. Is this an opportunity I should take? So yeah, yeah. even in our conversation with other people, Jesus must be a part of those conversations. Yes. Um, so yeah, being being alert to the medium of communication um, is... There's another passage that yeah. I wanted to bring out, and this is kind of in the idea of people who enjoy fighting and mm. it seems like their pastime, uh, this came to mind, 1 Timothy 6, 
it talks about people who teach a different doctrine that does not align with Christ's words. Um, and it says, if anyone does this, they're puffed up with conceit and they understand nothing. They have an unhealthy craving for contra controversy mm. and for quarrels about words, which produce envy, dissension, slander, evil suspicions, and constant friction among people who are depraved in mind and deprived of the truth, imagining that godliness is a means of gain. And then further in the passage, it says, but as for you, flee these things, mm. pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness, fight the good fight of the faith. Mm. And I think that's so clarifying because it's so easy to get focused on the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God, God does call us to engage and engage with the world, but sometimes you can spend a lot of time engaging in in d arguments with other people that you're not focusing on the truth. So yeah, that's it. That's yeah. a matter for prayer. Right. It is. Yeah. And I think there's a, a component of self de self deception. You can mm -hmm. think you're being focused on the truth, and you can think you're being a warrior and valiant for the truth. And in fact, you're just being very self-focused or you just are excited about the opportunity of proving yourself right or being heard or having a voice the truth is so much more important than that and that's an incredibly important passage yeah to bear in mind yeah and th these are just matters where if you're a believer in christ the spirit is in you mm -hmm. and he will lead you and guide you in these areas there are there are so many things worth fighting for mm -hmm. so yeah Keep, keep engaging with people who disagree with you, but work to do so in a, in a way that is pure, peaceable, gentle, open to reason. Yeah, very good. And even if you disagree with this podcast episode, Let I'd love to hear about it. We love would. to talk about it. We'll move toward you in <laughs> truth and clarity and gentleness and love. But hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's been helpful yes. to you as you interact with people who disagree with you. Thank you for joining us. Hope you can join us next time as well.